interview and you need a little help. Don't worry, I got you. What's going on, guys? T Wells here back with another video. Today's video, we're going over interview skills that will help you get through your interview when you're interviewing for a job position in process operations. Okay. This job could be for a technician job, operator job, maybe a maintenance job, but we're going to focus on operations. All right. So we're going to cover several topics. Number one, we're going to do the interviewing skills. We're going to do some uh, direct questions, general questions. You're going to have um, also what to wear, what to do after the interview, and a few tips once you do get the job that'll help you in your career as an operator. All right, let's get started. Number one, interview skills one-on-one. -on -one. When you go into an interview, guys, you need to build rapport off the rip. This is a general skill. So when you walk in into the interview room, you need to speak to everyone. So in these type of interviews, it's usually a panel. In my experience, you're going to have at least three to five people interviewing at one time. They're going to be all at a table, and they're going to be all looking at you, and they're going to be writing down notes, and this is how this interview is going to go. So don't be nervous. Be prepared. All right? First thing first, you want to walk in, introduce yourself to everybody. All right. Hey, how's it? Good morning. My name is T. Wells. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Hey, good morning. My name is T. Wells. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Hey, good morning or good afternoon. My name is T. Wells. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Just like that. Also, y'all might have a little small talk. They may say something. They may, sometimes they'll compliment you on your shirt. If you're a guy, you might have a nice tie on them and say, hey, you know, that's a cool tie, man. I like your tie. Oh, thanks. You know, I, and you give them a compliment back. Ladies, uh, same thing. You, you might have your hair done, which you should, and or you might have a nice dress on or whatever, and you get a compliment and say, hey, you know, it's a really, you know, your hair looks great. Da, 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 da. Cool. Now the interview is about to start. All right. So you build rapport first. Before you go to this interview, you need to do some research on the company. So whatever company it is, you need to know about some of their volunteer projects. This is going to help you. You need to know when they started, just a little bit of the history. Uh, you just need to know where they're located. I mean, you got to know where you're trying to work at. So you need to know about that. Um, and just any just any positive information that they had recently in the news. So this is going to help you when it comes to this interview, as well as how you dress, your appearance. You see what I got on, guys? Don't wear this to the interview, okay? You, you're not even going to get, they're not even going to look at you. They probably kick you out the room, okay? You need to be business casual, fellas. Button down. Nice pants, nice shoes, maybe a tie if you want to. You really don't have to have a tie, but we ain't going in there with no three-piece suit on or with gym attire like I got on. Ladies, you need to have a dress. You're not going to the damn club. You need to have a, a nice fitting dress, kind of like your news, ladies, that you see on on uh, on TV. Or you can go with the pants and a top, a nice top. Make sure your hair is done. Fellas, make sure you're shaved up, clean shaved. If you got a beard, it has to go. All right, they do not play the facial hair game in this industry. All right, especially in this department operation. All right, so now you have all of that. You build rapport when you first go in. You have your your resume with you. Oh, quick tip: your resume needs to be one page, one, one page for your resume. This is entry level. Okay, you don't need six hundred pages of what you did before you got here. Also, too, you need a reference sheet. This is like three to five contacts. Name, phone number, email, that simple. Just five bullet points or three bullet points. You have these two paper, sheets of paper in like a little folder or in your hand. Hey, you have them on hand just in case they ask. They may ask you, hey, you have your resume with you? Sure do, it's right here. I got, I got it on me, it's right here. All right, now let's get into the questions. First thing first. They're going to ask you some direct questions. Direct questions, we're going to go over about five of them. All right, question number one, tell me about yourself. Guys, this needs to be short and sweet to the point. Highlights. My name is, I went to school here, 
I've done this, this, and this. That's it. Okay? Just follow that little guideline right there. My name is. I'll give you an example. Hey. So tell me about yourself. Hey, my name is T. Wells. I went to school at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. I have experience in operations at Facility A. I held the position of operator. I operated on compressors, pumps, and uh, utility equipment. Okay, nice. That's it. Boom. All right. Next question is a direct question. What do you feel are your strengths? All right. You don't want to go all day on this either, but you want to hit four key points. Number one, integrity. That should be a strength. Integrity is doing the right thing regardless of who's around you or if you're there by yourself. So integrity needs to be one. Reliability better be on there. So reliability needs to be a strength. That means you show up to work and you show up on time and you will stay over if you have to. Okay. Third one, time management, something dealing with time management. Hey, they like that. This is going to keep you ahead of everybody else. All right. Not only can you come out here and do the job, but you can meet deadlines. And this is critical to production. All right. And then the fourth thing. So you got, you have integrity, you have time management, you have reliability. And then your last one, you need to be, um, you're very, you're a team player or you're very cohesive with others. So when you're on a shift, it's not just you. You may cover the job, but you're going to have several other people working with you. Okay. Also too, when you're on the job, you're going to have people working under you. So people are going to come to you and say, Hey man, look, we need to work on equipment X. Where is it? What, what's in it? Is it clean? Can we work on it while it's live? You need to know all this stuff. So you want to cover those four areas as far as your strength. All right. We're going to role play again. What is what are some of your strengths? All right. I have four strengths that I feel are my, you know, my strongest points about myself. Uh, first thing first, I have very high integrity. Hey, I do the right thing regardless of anybody watching or if I'm by myself. Number two, I'm very reliable. I, I show up to work early, same as I did for this interview. I'm usually 20, 30 minutes early, and also I'm willing to stay if needed. Uh, third thing, I'm very good at, at time management. As you can see, I wear a watch. I always want to know what time it is, how much time I have left, and the time that I've used up until this point. And the fourth thing, I am a team player. Guys, look, or you wouldn't say that, but you would say, hey, I'm a team player. Hey, I played sports when I was in school. And, that you know, so I'm dealing with that, that you're a team player. Or if you if you didn't play sports, if you got a family, hey, look, I have a family. And my family is, is my greatest team. And we, you know, we help each other out. We all have specific roles and we work together to make this family as best as it could possibly be. All right. All right. Another direct question. What phase of our industry interests you the most? All right, guys. If you get a question like this or any question dealing with why you want to work for us, do not bring up the money. They already know you're there for the money. Everybody in the room is there for the money, okay? That's why you got thousands of people applying for this job that you're applying for, okay? You want to bring up something that's different. That's why I said earlier in the video, look at some volunteer projects. Let's just say, I'm going to use myself for example. I like the beach. I love beaches. If I see that the company I'm, I'm applying for did a, a beach cleanup within the past year, you don't want something that's relevant, you know, new within a year. And I see that, so you know what? I will answer that question like, I really like that you guys did a volunteering project at the beach, the beach cleanup. You guys did this on whatever date, da, 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 da. And it really reached to me, you know, I really enjoy beaches whenever I go on vacation and I love to see a clean beach. And what better company to work for than someone who prides himself on keeping the environment clean as well as providing job opportunities to the community? Boom. Just like that. That's how you answer that question. All right. And last but not least, in a direct 
question section, if they ask you, what are your weaknesses? This is going to be a tricky one. Guys, do not hurt yourself in this question. I would keep it to maybe two to three weaknesses. Okay. For a good one would be um, not knowing everything. You know, hey, a weakness of mine is I don't have all the knowledge in the world. I wish I did. I wish I knew how to do everything under the sun, but I don't. So that, that's a weakness. You see, you see where I'm going here with this thing? It, it, it is a weakness, but it's not really a weakness, you know? Another one would be, another weakness could be um, either you uh, you work over the time. You know, hey, I, I work a lot. I, I enjoy working. Sometimes I get carried away and I just keep working, working, working. Some some along those lines as far as a, a weakness. Or, hey, man, I... I smile too much or something, you know. Hey, like I can't help myself. I don't, I don't, I don't think I frowned in two, three years, you know. So something like that, and that'll get them smile too, you know. All right. Next section of questions: behavioral. All right. These gonna cover pretty much. These questions are gonna try to figure out what do you do in certain situations. Are you gonna lock up? Are you gonna get upset? What What are you gonna do? So all right. So let's go through a few of these questions. All right. Describe a tough problem that you have to, that you've dealt with. Tell me how you approached it and what was the outcome. All right. You see there? They starting off the rip, man. Hey, look, this is a tough question. But the way you would do it, you could repeat the question back to them, or you ask them to repeat the question to you, and then you start to answer it. But how I would answer it, I would use the question and answer it back to them. So I would say. A tough problem that I have uh, that I've dealt with was learning um, Excel software in college. Hey, Excel wasn't my strongest point, but the way I overcame it was I put extra hours into studying. I also got with a tutor and asked my my professor for little tips that I could use outside the classroom to help me to improve my skill at Excel software. And now I'm proficient at Excel due to the steps above, I mean, or due to what I did before, okay? Easy, simple way. It could be anything. I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure it's things in your life that were difficult and you had to get through it. You just tell them, tell them. But you tell them smoothly. Don't be sitting here uh, 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 or looking around, no, no, no. You answer the question directly. And if you if this person asks you, you look at them, you answer, and then you look after you answer them, okay? Another behavioral question would be how would you handle a situation where you had to take different directions from several people at the same time? All right, guys. This is a good one. Because this is gonna be part of your job too. If you have to take directions from several different people. You want to prioritize and you want to prioritize safety. So that's what you tell them. Hey, look, if I got several people coming at me with different ways of doing something, I'm going with the safest option. I will put all the options out and I'm going with the safest one first. They're going to love that. Safety is number one at any facility. If it's not, you don't need to apply there because, hey, it's already a dangerous job. We're not sitting here making ice cream every day, you know? All right, another behavioral question. They may give you something that's kind of tricky. You know, tell me a time when you're absent or late to work. How did you communicate that with your supervisor? All right, you give them a real life situation. I will answer that question like this. All right, there is a time where I had I was I had I was scheduled to work at 5 p.m. My wife had a car accident, uh, a car issue in downtown his downtown Houston at you know 4 p.m. So an hour before I had to be at work. As soon as I got off the phone with my wife, I headed towards her and I called my supervisor. I let him know the full situation was going on, and I gave him a guesstimate time of when I could get back to work. I also offered to call any coworkers. Or the guys that were on shift then that can hold over for me if needed. All right? That's how you would answer that question. It's realistic. Hey, you are late. But 
you communicated effectively, and you gave your supervisor enough time to, to move some things around. You know, you may have let a guy go early and bring a guy in early, whatever. All right. So we got the direct questions, we got the behavioral questions. And they're going to focus more on the behavioral questions, guys. They're going to be several, several behavioral questions. They're going to ask you, hey, give me a situation when you, you did something unsafe and you knew about it. I mean, that's something, you know. And if, they, if you ever get the unsafe question and they ask you, hey, that you had to do something unsafe, you need to make it an emergency situation, okay? The way I answered that question, in my last job, we had an emergency shutdown. You're supposed to have procedures anytime you work on any equipment. There was an emergency going on. I did not have a procedure in my hand, but due to my qualification and my job knowledge, I was able to at least get the unit in a safe state, in a timely manner, and then I went to go print out the procedure. So that's a realistic situation. You know, it's the same thing when, you, when you're working on something in your house. You know, you got manuals and all this stuff to, to operate certain equipment in your house the right way. But if, if something goes wrong and you know what to do, you're going to act first and then get the procedure, you know. Or then go back into the manual. But that's that's a perfect way to answer the unsafe question if they ever ask you that. Also, too, they may ask you about conflict. So let's say you got a conflict with two of your coworkers are having a conflict. What are you gonna do? The way I would answer it, if two of my coworkers were having a conflict, I would try to calm both of my coworkers down. I would try to at least listen to both of them. And let them know, hey, we have a job to do here. We, we need cool heads, keep everybody safe, and we need to stay focused on the task at hand. And that's where I would leave it at. Hey, if they, you, you, you can go to the supervisor for everything, but we're all adults here, okay? You need to show that there are times where I can handle a conflict and I don't have to run to go tell my supervisor. Your supervisor already got enough stuff to deal with anyway. Now, if they out there scrapping, definitely don't jump into that. Oh, no, don't, don't do that. If, if, they, if it's that bad, hey, get your supervisor out there. Let them take it on from there. But if it's just some conflict, it's just going back and forth, uh, talking to each other, things like that, it's, it's not getting heated, but you can kind of see it's getting to that point. Intervene, tell them, hey, look, man, cool down. You chill, you chill. We got a job to do. Look, let's go home the way we came in here. You know, all in one piece. All right? And then usually, usually people calm down at that point. All right? Okay. Now you got through the, the direct questions, the behavioral questions. Now you're at the end of the interview, and they're going to say, hey, do you have any questions for me? Um, can we answer some questions? You say yes. You always say yes. You tell them, yeah, I do have some questions for you. You're asking them about the volunteering stuff, okay? This is going to set you apart. Ask them about a recent volunteering. What was the last volunteering project? Or do you guys have any new volunteering projects coming up? I would like to know about them. And also, too, how fast or how quickly can I get involved in the volunteering here once I'm hired on? So they kind of give them a little confidence boost too. Like, okay, man, this guy, I, I really like this guy. I like this this girl. You know, they, they're thinking outside of the money thing, okay? Also, too, another thing you can ask them is the work-life balance. So if you have kids or you got a wife or you got a dog, you got a pet fish, whatever, you just ask them, hey, what is the, the work-life balance here? You know, you guys doing a lot of production. I just want to know what's the work-life balance um, as far as the... Uh, and, and, and then you ask them their opinion. You get them to talking. Hey, how's the work-life balance here for you and you and you and you? Because it may be you may have a woman here, a man here, and a woman here and a man there. So it's going to be different from everybody, but at least you kind of get a feel for, okay, if I do work here, I ain't working 100 hours a day and I get, you know, 10 minutes off on the weekends. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to work 40 hours here. All right, cool. I'm going to get 30 off. All right. Okay, this this guy here, he has a family. Okay, I got a family. Or this lady here, she has a family, and this dude here is single. You know, I, I don't have kids, so me and him kind of relate, you know? 
those those two questions there, I believe that's good enough, man. You ask two good questions and then probably just some general like, hey guys, um, how is it, um, you know, how your day is going or, or something like that just to kind of end it and then you go on about your business. But those two, try to stick in those two areas, the volunteering one and then number two would be work-life balance, something dealing in that realm, okay? All right. Once you get up, and you're done with the interview, make sure you do a firm handshake. Tell them, hey, it was nice to meet them. Nice talking with them today. Um, you appreciate the time. And then you you can ask a question saying, hey, about the, the follow-up. Like, they're probably going to tell you already, hey, look, we're going to send emails out this week here or we're going to make phone calls this week here. But if they don't say it, then you just ask them, hey, um, what's the next step in this hiring process? You know, and, they, and they'll tell you. And that's it, guys. Um, once you do get the job, I would say, man, you need to have some self-confidence. You need to perform. You need to be willing to train. The reliability, you have to be reliable in this type of job. Man, the hours are too long. People are depending on you. You need to be a team player, okay? And, guys, that's it for today's video. I know it's long. If you have any questions, if you got an interview coming up or... Uh, you need help with a resume as far as in operations, okay? Process operations. Um, even if you're a student, if you're a student, man, you're having a little trouble, you know, understanding concepts or anything like that. Make sure to send me an email. I have an email. My email will be in the link uh, in the description. A link to my email be in the description <laughs> below. All right, guys, I hope this is helpful to you. Make sure you take notes. Watch this video a hundred times if you have to. I want you to get the job. I want you to get it the first time, okay? All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.